Hello and welcome to the eLearning course Advanced Firewall Installation, Configuration and Management Essentials 2 for Pan OS 7.0. This course is designed to teach you advanced concepts and configurations of the Palo Alto Networks firewall using a convenient online delivery. At the end of each module is a knowledge check which you are encouraged to successfully complete before moving to the next module. We also strongly recommend you configure the labs as instructed in the lab guide, especially if you plan to complete any of the Palo Alto Network certifications. Thank you for launching this e-learning course and we hope you enjoy your time with us. Welcome to the Advanced Firewall Installation, Configuration and Management Essentials 2 for Pan OS version 7.0. In this e-learning session, I will expand upon the Essentials 1 course and take a deeper dive into the advanced features and configurations of your Palo Alto Networks firewall. Each of our topics will be discussed in modules, as shown below. Module 1, Advanced Interface Configuration. In this section, we'll discuss some of the advanced use cases for NAT, including the configuration of port forwarding in conjunction with NAT translation, bi-directional NAT, U-turn NAT, and dealing with overlapping IP addresses in a network environment. We'll also discuss policy-based forwarding or PBF configuration and use cases and routing protocols, including OSPF. At the end, we'll have a quick look at Link Layer Discovery Protocol or LLDP. Module 2, App ID, Custom Applications. In this section, we will start with a quick review of the security policy and security policy rules on the firewall. We will also discuss how to identify proprietary applications running in your network using custom app IDs and how to control applications using application overrides. Advanced Content ID In this module, we'll talk about custom threat signatures, the data filtering security profile, zone protection and DOS protection profiles, and the botnet report. In this section, we will cover some of the options available for user ID, specifically the process of mapping a source IP to a user name. In Course 101, we discussed the implementation of the user ID agent. Here, we will be discussing options that do not use the user ID agent such as the use of the Terminal Server Agent, Captive Portal, and the use of XML Scripting and our API. Module 5, Quality of Service. In this section, we will discuss the creating of QoS policies and profiles, how they are added to interfaces, and some of the QoS monitoring tools. Monitoring and Reporting. In this section, we will look at forwarding logs and alerts via email and syslog. We will also look at forwarding alerts for zone protection profiles and how to configure SNMP v2 and v3. Additionally, we will look at the firewall's reporting capabilities. Module 7, Global Protect. In this section, we will begin with an overview of Global Protect. Next, we will detail the connection sequence that Global Protect uses and then the preparation of the firewall for Global Protect. We will also explore the configuration steps for the three parts of the Global Protect solution, the portal, the gateways, the agent software. We will get a look at Global Protect's ability to support a one-time password, and then we'll explore the concept of host checks. Finally, we'll look at enabling large-scale VPN deployment with Global Protect. Module 8, Mobile Security Manager. In this section, we will see an overview of the GP100 device that is at the core of the Mobile Security Manager. We will also explore deployment policies and see options for managing mobile devices. Module 9, Active Active High Availability. In this module, we will perform an overview of Active Passive HA, discuss Active Active HA concepts, and examine active-active deployment options, as well as active-active HA configuration. Additional important re the support portal is the live community. Next, take a look at the... Finally, check out... Few at the end of selected modules in this e-learning are hands-on labs that you are strongly encouraged to set up and complete. 
Once these labs are completed, you should be able As mentioned at the start of this course, we highly recommend Welcome to Module 1, Advanced Interface Configuration. In this section, we'll discuss